Hey everybody, welcome to Cheap Comic Collector. This is number 418, I think. Pretty sure. <laughs> August 6th is the date, which means my birthday's in three days. If you haven't gotten your contest entries in to win this slab, you are almost out of time. If you go back to time travel, back to July 9th, and find my video entitled contest time it's got the details of what you need to do uh, basically you need to create a video uh matching certain things and uh go watch that video create the video it, it only takes a few minutes come on guys it's not that hard and uh we will out of all the contest entries if there are any we will have a drawing for that slab and you know what? If there aren't any entries, if I don't get any entries, I'm keeping the darn thing. I'll crack it open on my birthday. Um, <laughs> but uh, if you want to win it, you got to enter. So um, that's actually in a few days. I was actually like thinking I had this entire week to show comic books for the sale. And I've been showing stuff. I don't feel as guilty now about grabbing all these books the last couple days because... Uh, it's my birthday week. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll still do a sale on Saturday and, but it may end up being almost entirely books you haven't seen yet. So, <laughs> because today, once again, you know, I grabbed the stacks that I have sitting around cause I'm trying to clean it up. These are basically been some books that didn't have boxes and, uh, I got two small stacks today to go through and those stacks I overpaid for they cost me over two dollars a piece for one reason or another and uh so basically nothing's going into the sale from these this video either unless it's something i already have so i'm gonna pull up the list and we'll check as we go through because i'm not sure about these um but yeah this first uh this first one actually sent me a little note card that's unusual um, and it's from Skedman 66 something. I can't read, I should know, and I can't read the last two items. But if you just look up Skedman 66 something something, um, you'll find this seller. But unfortunately, I don't know if I got in too late or what, but uh, yeah, these came in at actually two dollars and four. 42 cents uh which seems quite high for what's here oh there's at least a couple books that will go into the sale oh three four oh wow these are not these are not two dollars and 42 cents material okay that one is the last two maybe <laughs> all right we're gonna go up top we'll get started um yeah, very disappointed that these came in at that high of a price because of the the, the shipping charges. So I gotta I gotta I gotta really watch that. It's just not working out buying in individual comics and whatnot. Um I gotta make sure if I Yeah, the thing is is it what you wanna get cheapest shipping as possible. The only way to do that is buy a bunch of comics. But sometimes they end the show, sometimes um, there's just not enough stuff there that you actually want to pay for that much for. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm going to have to figure something out on controlling that. <laughs> Cause these are definitely not $2 comics for the most part. Um, but first up, we have Dragon Slayer number one from Marvel, the movie adaptation of the uh, Paramount and Disney collaboration movie that came out back in the day. And I'm just scrolling through my list to find if I have any Dragon Slayer. I don't think I do. Dragon. Oh, I do. I do have this one. Okay. All right, I didn't realize I have the complete set of this. So this is number one, 
Um, not too bad of shape. Looks like it's got some spine ticks on it. Got fine tick here, fine tick here, fine tick here, fine tick here. A couple up here. But overall, not too bad. That's about it. There's a little indentation in here. That I guess is on the cover too. You just can't tell it on the cover. But you can see it on the inside. Uh, so yeah, if you liked this movie, this is the first of two issues. It's got a cool cover. I wonder who the cover artist is on this. I'm going to look that up. It is from Marvel Comics. They did a lot of movie adaptations back then. Let's see if... Uh... Oh, here's the information from the Munsters comic I was showing yesterday. It had five issues in 1997, the new series did. Uh, the original series came out 65 to 68, had 16 issues from, from Gold Key. Um, and yeah, something's going on with the Grand Comics database website. It's just, it's working, but it is extremely slow. So... I was trying to go to the Munsters page and look at the covers, but it won't even uh, won't even do that. Let me let me type in Dragon Slayer so we get to the information I'm looking for, and uh, it'll take a couple clicks. So we'll just let it run. <laughs> but this one's gonna go in the sale because I already have it. Uh. Shaman's Tears, number eight. Pretty sure I don't have this one, but I do have a couple of them. Uh, yeah, Saints Service unavailable for the Grand Comics database. It does that sometimes. I think that they are uh, overtaxing their capabilities a lot of the time because it's such a they have so much data on that site, and I mean, pretty much everybody uses it. Because it's such a great reference. And let me look up Shaman's Tears. See where I am with that. I don't think I have number eight, but I'm there's always a possibility I do. I think I've got a couple issues. Since I discovered it lately. Yeah, I have a one, two, and four, so I'm keeping this one. And then we have the Astounding Wolfman, number nine. Uh, Robert Kirkman's story is number nine and number ten. Um, so I grabbed that because I know everybody's into horror a little bit. And I thought somebody might want that. So those are going to go in the sale. Uh, really beat up copy of Detective Comics 671. Uh, I'm not going to put that one in the sale just because it's in such terrible condition. I mean, it's, oh, yeah, it's really, really bad. It's also got a dull sticker stuck on it. Um, looks like the back cover is even falling off back there. I'll have to, uh, well, maybe that now. I'll have to open this one up and see if it's there. Make sure it's all there. And, uh. I know my copy of this is currently, I believe, just in a, one of my random boxes, so I can't grab it. Yeah, this is in terrible condition for such a newer comic. I can't believe they even sold this. This is crap. <laughs> I mean, for something from the uh, you know 90s, and this is really in bad shape. Um, I mean, it looks like something from... Back in the 50s or something, the condition that it's in, you'd think that's what it would be. But uh, I'm not putting that in a bag and corner. What am I doing? That's not even worth it. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I can't sell that. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. I, I may I may keep it, but that's in really rough condition, even for me. Um, 
Let's see, Action Comics 659. As you know, I'm trying to put the Action Comics runs together. And I do need this one. For some reason, this one has eluded me for a bit. And that fills a nice hole. So I'll be keeping that one as well. Great, uh, great cover there. Spawn number 25, not, uh, I should keep this because I paid so much for it, but I am not currently actively pursuing Spawn, so I'll probably go ahead and put it in the sale. Uh, it does have some spine ticks on it, though, so it's not in the greatest of condition. Oh, well, you know what? Some Spawn, everybody likes Spawn, so I should probably... I make that decision let me bring up the comic book price guide just to make sure that it's not worth some obscene amount of money I, I, I don't usually do this but uh, since I paid so much for it I'm gonna have to actually sell it for less than I paid for it Take a look and see what I can see. And I didn't type in the issue number. I should have done that. This is number 25. There's an A and a B cover. It's the first appearance of somebody called Tremor. Oh, it's just a direct edition and a newsstand edition. This is the direct edition. And it's actually worth less than the newsstand edition. So, yeah, not a big deal. That one will go in the sale. Uh, Walking Dead 163. That one I'll put in the sale as well, just because I know there's people that grab the Walking Deads. And, uh, again, it's a good series. I read the first hundred issues online when they first came out. And, uh, um, but it's not something that's, again, it's a modern, more modern book, so it's not something that's just currently in my, my, uh, choice for collecting. I do want to get them someday, but, uh, today is not that day. So many comics, so little time, and I gotta give you guys something that you like, not just, uh, Grabbing everything for me. And Sectors number three. I have this one as well. This one's pretty beat up. Um, yeah, that's worn. I'm going to actually... <clears throat> this one will go in the sale as well. So actually a lot of these from this pile is, are going in the sale. Because I either have them or they're just not quite what I'm looking for today. Um, but this one is in rough shape. It's been like flattened out and stuff, but it's it's got a lot of wrinkles in it. It's got wear up here on this corner. Corner bends uh, inside and out. Yeah, this is in rough shape. Rough condition. I, I wouldn't pay $2 for this. <laughs> I mean, if you choose to, that's all you, but... Uh, it would not be a choice that I would do. <clears throat> yeah, that's one. I mean, this is good enough for my collection, though. So if I have a nice copy, I, I might swap this, swap this out. Let me... Uh, what, what year is this from? 1980... Uh, I'm not going to be able to find it. I don't... Yeah, the fact that I have sectors... They would have been recent buys, I think. So, um, yeah, it's in my stack. So someday, if this doesn't sell, someday there will be a better copy eventually in the claim sale. But I don't, I could not tell you when. It's literally going to be months, if not years, before I get to some of those books in those boxes. The way things have been going. So we'll see. We'll see. 
Next up, we got New Titan 63. I should let me make sure these are on camera. Yeah. Okay. They're good. Um, <clears throat> New Titans. New Titans. New Titans. I need this one. I need 63 and 64. So this one will go into my collection as well. Yep, yep, yep. Love me some Titans. Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos. Number 123. Let me see. Do I need 123? I do not need 123, but this is a very rough copy. As you can see, it's got... Uh, not only does it have a rolled spine, but the rolled spine was flattened and cut into various pieces. <laughs> so let me try and roll it back here. Oh my goodness. That's crazy. They had a rolled spine and then they flattened it and created all those cuts into it. So, um, still got a rolled spine really bad. Uh, it's got a huge rip in the back. This one's rough shape, guys. Sorry. That's, uh... I won't be buying from this guy again. I'm sorry. These are just not in good enough condition for the price I got them for at all. These are barely dollar comics, if that. Um, I, mean, I guess I'll throw it in the sale just in case anybody wants the darn thing. But that's... I'll probably just give it to somebody. Uh, Superman 353, this is from 1990. No, that can't be right. 1980, there we go. Put on your glasses, Rob. Where are your glasses? You're supposed to be wearing your glasses. But I don't like wearing my glasses. 353, Superman 353. I need this one. Too late, Superman the Killer has already struck. Plus, the secret origin of Bruce Wayne. What? Bruce Superman Wayne. What? I'm confused. Oh, it's an imaginary story. Just imagine. So, it's like if Superman had been discovered by the Waynes rather than the Kents. Oh, that's kind of a cool what if story. All right. Let's let's go. Let's go. Here we go. Mighty Samson. Now, these are definitely ones I don't mind keeping. But let me check the list. There's a slight possibility that I already have them. Mighty Samson. What? It says I only have one issue of Mighty Simpson. I thought I had more than that. Well, alright. It's either inaccurate or people have been buying them when I've had them in the sales. Which is part of the reason I'm grabbing more books. Because the sales are going so well that it is... Uh, difficult for me to add to my older collection because everything's getting picked up pretty much which is great but uh, occasionally you'll see me grabbing stuff now so and this week especially and it's my birthday week so I don't mind doing it I was I thought I was being selfish but it's my birthday week so I am giving myself presents <laughs> this is number nine by the way and this one, a 12 center golden age stuff, or silver age, I guess. This is number six. Cool. Even earlier, 1966. Back then, Higgy was picking up sticks. If he was born, probably wasn't born yet. I wasn't born yet. I was born in 67, so I was not picking up sticks 
until 76. And let's see, these are, yeah, these are going on my pile. And these are going in the sale. So that's the end of that first stack. So cool stuff. Happy birthday to me. Uh, let's see, this is from Whatnot Pops Comics. On um, Whatnot. This is $2.13 a comic these came out at. Um, hmm. Why, why did those come up so much? I must have misjudged shipping again because these were all dollar comics so th except for a couple. So uh, yeah, I must have just uh, shipping must have went crazy on me on these. Sadly that keeps happening when I try to get the individual comics instead of buying as a bunch. So same deal. Uh, it, I paid over $2 a comic, so if it's something I need, something I want, something I don't have, it's staying here. We got Tweety and Sylvester. I thought I saw a buddy dad. I did. I did get a buddy dad. He had a telescope. There we go. Tweety and Sylvester. Let's see what number it is. Oh, and they wrote on the bags. I hate that. Why do you guys insist on ruining a complete, a perfectly good bag? It never did anything to you. Uh, 1972. Number 25. And ooh, that will be my earliest issue of that particular series. I do have 14 and 15 of the previous series, which I guess would have been Dell. This is a nice quality bag. Is this Mylar? I don't know what Mylar is, guys. People keep talking about the difference of Mylar, and the only thing that I can tell is that it's supposed to be really clear, so it shows off the books really nicely. But as far as I can tell, all the bags that are new show off the books really nicely. So, I don't really know. I don't know. And here's a Dell. This one is a Daffy Duck. It is incomplete. I have this one marked as incomplete, unfortunately. And I need to put that on my stack. I'm going to make that mistake yet. This is number 17 from 1959. Uh, but I think it's missing some centerfolds. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Yep, it's missing one centerfold. And uh, it is definitely story pages missing because the beginning of this story is missing. Uh, can't quite tell. This may be the end of this story, but it's... It doesn't say the end on it, so I'm not sure. Um. All right, well, bummer. Not only did I pay over $2 an issue, but I didn't even get a complete comic book. Oh, uh, here we have Bugs. Bugs Bunny. Brought his own lunch to the restaurant. And it's Adele. So number 67 from 1959. Uh, there is a very small chance that I have that one. Let me see. Bugs Bunny. What number did I say it was? 67. Uh, I do not have this one. I have number 68, but not number 67. So, this one will be staying with me. The Amazing Think, Think, Think Machine. 
Oh, and oh, the centerfold's loose. And it's got Tweety and Sylvester story. Fun stuff. Fun, fun stuff. She's got a Schwinn Panther bike. And on the back, those are cool. The Jetsons from Charlton. Number six. Ray Durgo cover. That's for me. Bullwinkle and Rocky with an extra 16 page fun catalog. Boy, howdy. It says it's a cheap comic, but it's not. It costs over $2. <laughs> oh, it is number six, just like it said on the bag. 1973 Matador Moose. Oh, I got the fractured fairy tale about the shoemaker and the elves, and the fun catalog. We got SSP Racers. And some more SSP things. Blith Dial by Kenner. Uh, Adventures with Gabigail. So, uh, I guess the 70s version of, or 60s version. Or, well, Chatty Cathy actually would have been in the 70s, right? So maybe an earlier version of that. Uh, Easy Bake Oven. Cool. Snoopy toothbrush holder. Get your Snoopy electric toothbrush. Uh, Kenner Screen and Show cassette projector. You can see Josie and the Pussycats and Scooby Doo and Sabrina and. The Hair Bear Bunch, Harlem Globetrotters, Archie, uh, Chip Away, the statue making toy, Whittle Away, the wood carving toy, Fun Factory, which is basically Play Doh. No, oh, it is Play Doh. <laughs> Never mind. I thought it was like a generic Play Doh, but it's real Play Doh. Uh, but you can also get the Presto Molder Car Town set and make your own cars or jewelry. And you can make swinging designs with the all new Spirograph. Cool stuff. That goes into Dudley Do Right. Another Wink Bullwinkle and Rocky Fling Fung. No, Fling Fling the Banjos. <laughs> Got Bullwinkle playing a banjo. Cool stuff. Doctor Strange, number 25. I can almost guarantee you I do not have this one, but I will check just to make sure. Doctor Strange. Let's see, this would have been the earlier ones from 70s. Nope. I have 17 and 28. No, 25. But the... Art in these early issues was amazing, so let's take a look. Yeah, Jim Starlin on the script, Al Milgram and Pablo Marcos doing the inks. Al Milgram as the penciler, nice. I mostly know him as inking other people's work. This is cool stuff. Ghost Rider ad on the letters page that only printed one letter, but it's from uh, Catherine Yaronwood, 
who is a name you may recognize as, uh, I believe she was later the editor of uh, Eclipse. I want to say Eclipse, but I'm not sure if I'm right. Cool. So that will be added to my collection. Claw the Unconquered, number 12. So let's take a look at this one. There's a chance I've got this one because I think I have a complete set of claws. I do. Yes, I have 1 through 12. This is the last issue. 35 cent cover by Joe Kubert. Um, it does have a lot of wear on the uh, edge, along the edge of the cover. There's a some kind of crease running through here. Um, they, they write on every single bag. Man, what a waste of time during a sale. <laughs> uh, 1978. Is that right? Yeah. Only 12 issues, but it was published from 1975 to 1978. Um, this is the last issue by David Michelini, Keith Giffen, and Bob Light. Keith Giffen did the art on this. Back when he knew how to draw before he went to develop that weird style that he's got. <laughs> I mean, you can see the beginnings of that style here, but... Um, yeah, I, I like, like his earlier artwork much better. All right, cool. Did they know this was going to be the last issue? Nope. Next issue on sale during the second week in July. But it was the end of a story, so it ended in a good place, I guess. Uh, so there we got something else just pretty cool going into the sale. That makes me that makes me feel a little better. Oh, Ghost Manor. Visit Ghost Manor if you dare. This is number 32 from Charlton. Charlton. Oh my. Don't drink the wine. Don't do it. <laughs> All right. Now it's going to put to the side. Daffy Duck. Daffy Duck. Daffy Duck. What rhymes with Daffy Duck? <sighs> Number 58 from 1969. Daffy. Was it Daffy or Daffy Duck? There was two different series. Daffy Duck. You don't need that one. Sorry, guys. It's a gruesome solution. Oh, it's a reprint. Even though it's from 1969, it says it was reprinted by popular demand. I guess they had an editor named, you know, Sam Popular or something. Because it's, I seriously doubt anybody's writing in for a reprint of a Daffy Duck story. Because if they'd read it, then they'd already have it. So, yeah, just doesn't quite make sense there. Ghosts from DC Comics, right? number 47. That's cool. Wrath of the Restless Spectres, The Haunted Catacombs, and The Swahili Talking Bones. Seems like there should be another uh, word in that title. Um, <laughs> and I think the uh, 
artist initials there look like an LD. Uh, I don't know who that is. Not familiar. See if we have any credits. 1976 this is from. Uh, Ert by... I don't know who that is either. It may be your oh, I can't tell. I can't read it. Wonder if uh Grand Comics database has recovered yet. <laughs> oh, it's not even here. I must have shut it down. Oh, well, that's okay. The Swahili Talking Bones. Yeah, that is the title. Okay. In Haunted Catacombs. Oh, that's great. Great art. In these old horror books. And they got a Superman uh, public service announcement about justice for children. And let's see what's next. Peter Parker, Spectacular Spider-Man number 15. And... I will check, but I can almost guarantee I do not have that one either. Mm hmm. Nope. I have 16 through 19, and 7 through 9, and 11, but no number 15. So I'll be keeping this one as well, guys. Pretty nice copy. Uh, it does have some wrinkling up here, so it might have some water damage. That's okay. All right. So, um, you know, some books going into the claim sale for Saturday. Not making my, much progress on that Saturday sale, Rob. <laughs> but getting good stuff for my collection. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Oh, wow. We're at 37 minutes. I must have spent too much time rambling. Sorry about that. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a good one.